Kind of course. Uh, so my presentation will be about uh, twelve-factor methodology and uh, some uh, ideas and experience how we try to adapt this methodology in our projects. Uh, my name is Vladimir. I'm a software engineer in IPAM. I'm .NET guy. Uh, this presentation will be yeah. I like bicycling, camping, uh, jazz music. Uh, this presentation will be about 12-factor uh, app methodology, and uh, this is will be mostly interesting for backend developers. However, frontend developers also can uh, gain some interesting uh, knowledge about how, uh, like. Uh, applications are built uh, and uh, maybe some of the factors are also could be used in front of uh, but for me it will be hard to explain exactly uh, what can be done in front of because uh, maybe you 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 can help me uh, so in general uh, uh, and some guys, uh, guys from Hiroku, uh, they came up with methodology. They uh, uh, just decided to do it in uh, some list of factors and present it uh, in such way. Uh, so nowadays we are building uh, applications uh, which we need to. Uh, develop uh, test on local environment, then deploy somewhere on some staging environment and uh, on production, maybe on some test environment, and uh, also uh, we are moving to containerizing our applications. So uh, if we are talking about web applications, uh, it should be scalable uh, and. Uh, We'd like to uh, avoid. Uh, uh, we'd like to simplify uh, our development. Uh, I mean, if, if we tested it locally, we we'd like to be uh, sure that it will also work on production in the same way as much as we can be sure in that way. So. Uh, yeah, let's uh, go through the uh, these factors, and uh, I'd like to use flip charts instead of presentation because the uh, presentation is not so interesting.
So, so, so it will cover partially the presentation, but uh, actually it doesn't matter so much what's in, in the presentation. So uh, basically, uh, how we develop uh, our applications? At first, we write the code. So we have the code base. And uh, methodology says, uh, first factor is about code base. Methodology says that you should write your code only once, and then uh, this code should have many deploys. Uh, you should uh, run this code locally and on any environments that you have. So the same code that you test locally uh, should be run on the production without any changes. So at first we have some, for example, git repo, where we put our code. And we should have on the uh, they are not saying about this, but uh, I'm not sure how to do it in different way. We should uh, have only one master branch where we merge our code to uh, build some uh, artifacts from this code. Uh, so we have a Git repository where we uh, merge our code. Code. And uh, let's imagine that we have uh, some service and uh, some uh, module that uh, could be used in our service and in some other service. So in that case, we will have two repositories, and this will be up application, and this will be deep. Uh, and the, these will be two separate repositories. Uh, for example, uh, currently I'm working on one project where we have part in .NET and part in Python, and we are trying to utilize these uh, uh, principles, this methodology on, on both sides, but it's uh, hard to do it in the same way. But uh, it works. And in .NET, for example, we have microservices, and it uh, perfectly fits uh, the .NET world. In uh, JavaScript, it's also about the uh, modules. It will be some other next uh, principles here, yeah, dependencies. So uh, you should explicitly declare your dependencies it means that you uh, should have dependencies in some packages. That's why I have uh, two Git repos here. Uh, for example, I developed my dependency, which could be reusable in other services or other projects uh, in separate repository uh, as some lib package. And I have a separate pay up package and the up package will uh, use lib package not directly like uh, in the code reference in some uh, even not directly referencing it but uh, uh, getting it through some package manager and uh, explicitly declare means also that you should explicitly use some particular version you should uh, use uh, version 1.1, for example, not just the uh, latest version or something. Uh, because if latest, uh, it means that locally you tested on one version, but later it will be updated, you will deploy your application, you will run npm install, and it will install some other version. For example, uh, Angular developers uh, they say that they are using semantic version, but they are lying. Uh, and they are saying about this uh, also in their documentation. And they did some breaking changes uh, for minor update and uh, for some proof of concept for internal project. We were just using uh, some package without uh, explicitly specifying the version. And at some point, we deployed our application on the uh, staging environment, and it crashed with some very strange error. 
And we, uh, I spent uh, one day to resolve this, and I just discovered that they did some brain change. And uh, that, that was because I didn't uh, explicitly uh, point to some particular version in my dependencies. Okay, uh, about config, uh, the, the next uh, principle. Uh, they say that we should uh, inject our conf uh, config from the environment variables. What, uh, what the config is? Config is uh, some uh, things that are changing from the uh, deployment to deployment, I mean uh, on staging environment and uh, on test environment, on production environment, we could have some uh, different uh, URLs, connection strings, some uh, flags, and uh, this is the uh, configuration. And they say that we should inject this. Uh, usually, uh, like previously in PHP world, I was doing it in such a way that I had to uh, config files, and I just switch between them based on some uh, flag, which I uh, set somehow from outside. Uh, but they say that this is incorrect, and uh, I agree because uh, it means that in code base you have all the configuration for all the uh, environments, and if you need to add any environment, you need to change your code. If you need to change your code, you, you need to rebuild, uh, to create new build. It means that uh, ch changing the configuration for deployment on this stage requires changing in the code, and it's something wrong if you have to do this. So, uh, so configuration should be injected on the deployment. Here, let's update our uh, schema here. So here we work with the code, and uh, when we merge our code to master, uh, on our project we have auto automatic build, uh, and we build, uh, when we update this code, we just manually uh, set the version, and it uh, this uh, versioning is, uh, I'll see. Uh, versions are the same on all the stages to easily track uh, what was deployed, uh, how to find the uh, code uh, which was deployed on, on some uh, environment. So when I update this uh, code for this library, it's built to separate package, and when I update the code for my application, it's uh, built into uh, application package. So, I don't know, for example, we use here GitLab or Bamboo to build uh, to create our builds. Uh, and then, uh, when we deploy, to, uh, we do not deploy libraries, so there is no uh, continuation. Uh, on this uh, track, but we do deploy our applications. And we deploy application, for example, to dev, and it could be done like in .NET world, we do it with help of Octopus, or it could be done in GitLab. And uh, uh, for Python, we are using Docker and Kubernetes, so Kubernetes injecting this configuration on the deployment stage. Uh, so Kubernetes holds this configuration and it takes the uh, build artifact and it takes some configuration for a particular target, deployment target. Uh, and it injects it in uh, one action, and this is uh, release. A uh, few things uh, how I, how we currently uh, do not follow this principle. For example, in Atopus, in .NET, it's hard to do this. 
We need to uh, break everything. We need to do it in a very strange way just to follow this principle. So there is no much sense to do this because in general, like even uh, despite on that uh, we do not inject uh, our configuration through the environment variables, we actually do not store configuration inside in our code base and uh, all configuration is being injected uh, to the package which is being deploy deployed because Octopus do this injection. So we kind of uh, do not strictly follow this principle, but uh, we utilize it. Uh, yeah, and uh, I just uh, recall very funny story. I worked as freelancer for some company in Russia, and uh, they were building uh, some financial application, and I was worked like a front-end developer. Uh, and they started to work with me, and they just uh, gave me some small task, and they give me a repository. No, they didn't give me a repository. They sent me a code by email in archive, and so just do something there and send uh, this back. I asked, guys, don't you have a repository? They said, yes, we have, but we are like afraid of you for now. We don't know you, so let's start in that way. I, I said, okay, so first task I implemented in this way. They saw, okay, this guy can do something. And I asked, guys, okay, let's reach to uh, good process. And they gave me access to the repository, but I was a little bit uh, concerned about uh, something was wrong. And uh, wrong was that uh, they do not like have single repository for the whole application. They have separate repository when they uh, whole, uh, store only front end code, and then they manually uh, copy this code when it's tested uh, as a front end. They manually copy it to the full application manually without any uh, like cherry picking or something without sending patches, just manually, and. Uh, this is even uh, not violating of these principles. This is violating of common sense. So I, I did it a uh, few times, but then I said, guys, I cannot do this anymore. So uh, fourth uh, factor principle is that you should treat uh, any backend services as attached resources. This is more for like, uh, yeah, this is more for backend, but in frontend, for example, maybe you can directly use some uh, external services, external APIs from the frontend. I don't know, maybe it's not the best idea, maybe it's good. Uh, but on backend, for example, you can have uh, database and uh, for example, in, do in .NET world, we can work uh, locally with uh, local SQL, SQL Express. Uh, then on stage environment, we can have, uh, I don't know, enterprise SQL. And uh, on production, we can go to the cloud and uh, use Azure uh, SQL. And uh, they say that uh, you should uh, be able to switch be between these three different uh, baking services. Just uh, uh, it should be a matter of switching just one line in config. So in .NET we call this connection string. So you just switch connection string, and you use different uh, driver. You use different uh, service. However, using different driver uh, will be covered in some uh, following factor because it's not the best idea according to this uh, methodology. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please uh, just ask. Uh, so, fifth principle is about uh, how you should, uh, what workflow you should follow. So, at first you build uh, some artifact from the code base and then you release 
and just simply run your application. If it's backend application, you yeah, just run what was released, and uh, as uh, it's shown on this uh, schema, this is about ingesting configuration on the during the deployment when you do the release. Uh, and uh, release, uh, I believe uh, you would like to not just uh, make an action of releasing your application, but uh, probably you'd like to uh, store this artifact uh, to be able to uh, revert back to previous version or two, two versions back because uh, maybe in previous version uh, everything was working, but uh, something was broken, and uh, you your regression uh, tests or testers didn't find this, and uh, you cannot uh, apply hotfix. Uh, you cannot fix it uh, quickly, so maybe you need to revert back, uh, fix your code base, and then you will. Uh, a new build, you will make new release, and uh, so your delivery pipeline should uh, also support this. And for example, uh, some guys who uh, work with Docker, they do not have this concept of release. They just uh, have, they just build some image, and they just just deploy the latest image, and. Uh, they could be in trouble because uh, how can you know what image uh, is uh, working well, what image is tested with uh, another dependencies. Uh, so it's good to have such concept and uh, use it in your job. Uh, this is about uh, backend mostly. Uh, so, when you run your application, it should be run as uh, inside one stateless process. Uh, it uh, will help you to scale your application because, uh, for example, if you just uh, build a Docker image, uh, if you have some uh, big amount of uh, users, coming uh, to your, visiting your web page and using your application, uh, Kubernetes could uh, automatically expand the number of pods and uh, run more uh, containers. Uh, in that case, they should be stateless and you should avoid uh, session pinning because if a uh, user is pinned to some particular node on the back end, uh, if uh, you have load balancer, next time uh, the request should, could and probably will hit another node and uh, you will have uh, strange behavior uh, or you can have, I don't know, some, you can have some cache dis di discrepancies on different nodes. So if, you should do it uh, in stateless way to avoid uh, such problems. Uh, another factor is, is named disposability. Uh, so it means that uh, the same example, if uh, Kubernetes uh, should quickly run another, start another container, and uh, this container should quickly uh, be added to the pool of uh, backend uh, nodes, your application should uh, should start quickly. At the same time, when load is getting down, uh, your uh, application should gracefully do graceful shutdown. And uh, even you should you should be prepared even for non graceful shutdown because of hardware failure, for example. Uh, your service should expect that hardware failure uh, can uh, occurred at any moment of its work, so uh, job uh, or, uh, results of the job should not be lost, or you should not 
like at first you need to do some job and only then you should uh, uh, write the results or uh, store the progress. For example, we do some uh, queuing uh, stuff between our services and it, it, it is covered by this disposability. So when we start our service, it reads some, something from the queue and uh, uh, related to graceful shutdown, for example, if uh, your service uh, get the shutdown signal, it should return the uh, message back to the queue. And usually it, it's done in the uh, queuing systems by default, I suppose. Uh, also, you can, for example, open uh, DB transaction, and if it won't be uh, committed, it will be just all back, and uh, it means that job will not be done, but uh, you will not have uh, any broken data in the database. And this tenth uh, factor, that prosperity, it means that you should have as much uh, similar environment uh, on local machine, on staging environment, on testing environment, and on production. And, and uh, I talked about this violation of, the, of this principle when you have, uh, for example, Express SQL on a local machine, but on production you run Azure. Uh, I believe at least on test environment you should uh, use uh, the same, uh, maybe even hardware, uh, to test your application. Because uh, development on the, uh, in the cloud uh, is not very easy, but testing should be done on the same environment as production. Uh, yeah, and it, it could really help you uh, to discover any problems because of differences in uh, drivers or uh, hardware. Next principle is about logs. Uh, your service should treat uh, logging just a, a simple uh, stream of events. It means that your application uh, should not uh, know a lot about logging. It should, uh, for example, in Python we just simply uh, write logs to std out and we don't care what, uh, what will happen with the logs. So somebody from outside should care about this. Uh, in that case we we can implement it in a very simple way. Just write uh, to STD out, and that's it. And uh, after that, uh, it could be redirected to the file. Some uh, file bit service could uh, take the file and uh, uh, send it to the uh, Elasticsearch, and uh, then all this log search and Kibana stuff could do the rest of the job. And uh, twelfth factor is admin processes. Uh, they should be run uh, in the same way like you deploy your application, uh, your service. For example, if we have some uh, DB database, uh, we can also create some uh, repository with, uh, for example, migrations inside. And uh, we can build this and it will be executable, uh, so, uh, just executable, not a library. And uh, these migrations uh, on deployment, they could be applied automatically to the database and database schema will be updated. Uh, and uh, it will happen only once 
but it will go through the same uh, pipeline. So in general, that's it about these uh, 12 factors. So maybe you have any comments, ideas, uh, suggestions or something? Yeah, I have one question. So for example, in, uh, I don't know how it's done in your application, for example, in some application, we have a server side and we have a database. And for example, uh, so where here is your database changes? For example, migrations for adding columns or adding tables. Is it in the same repository as your first column? Application. It's hard to say because uh, in my current application, I, my database just disappeared because I queues are enough for me, so I don't have any database. All state is uh, not queues, even streams. All state is uh, stored in even streams. I can just read the even streams, and I I know current state because. Uh, we have some processing uh, functionality. But uh, we also have uh, front end and back end. And for this, we have separate uh, repository as it's drawn here. Uh, because, for example, uh, you need to apply migrations only once. Uh, but, for example, uh, today we have a ta task uh, to add some new feature. So implement these changes on the UI side, on the application side, and on the VE side. Yep. And uh, they should uh, uh, go to production in the same time, because it doesn't make sense to have a new application with UI without these database changes. Okay. So uh, they will be, in this process, they will be built together, right? Into some uh, Docker. Uh, Not exactly. Based on this picture, they will be built separately because uh, they will be separate uh, repositories and separate uh, build processes. Okay. Uh, and if you then found some issue, for example, on the uh, database side, uh, so you will have, uh, as I understand, two separate processes. One is roll back to some uh, stable uh, release, and then another one to run some um, roll back changes to database some migrations and uh, how to uh, how to do you have something some ideas or some principles how to do it uh, in, uh, in parallel how to okay. read uh, uh, simultaneously yeah uh, I see a question so if, if, if it's not a one release the same release they need to yeah. separately and don't forget all we have back application yeah. in this case we need to uh, Sorry, uh, it's just discharge. Uh, I don't have uh, big experience exactly in, in this kind of situation, but I can imagine that uh, I will try to do uh, in such way that your changes uh, in database schema should be backward compatible. Yes, of course. Yes, yeah, so in that case, you can apply uh, changes first it will not break any functionality on the backend or frontend. And then, at any time, you can update your uh, backend and frontend. And by the way, we have backend and frontend also separately. So we have the same kind of situation uh, between backend and frontend. At first, we need to deploy backend to support, to uh, upgrade the data models on the back end, and only after that we can deploy front end uh, because. So, okay, so front end will be another repository, one more. Yes. And another, one more process. Yes. In this case, we will have three, pro for, for example, if something is wrong, we need to roll back all UIs, applications, and database at the same time. Uh, I have an answer, not exactly. This is our problem one uh, single repo versus masses. Mass, uh, was the multiple repos. And uh, some teams prefer a single repo when everything goes into a single repo. Then you have development branch, you have a release branch, you have master branch where you, you release your stuff and you have 
hotfix branch where you make hotfixes and uh, there is a process when you switch from one branch to another, when you merge it uh, and stuff like that, when you propagate changes back. With multiple repositories, I, I, I was on such project, it was a big Thompson Reuters project, and because of organizational problems, you need to have multiple repositories. And teams work in, in independently, but then they have one staging environment where they all deploy at the same time. And then you have schedule, when you need to, to release, uh, release windows at low usage time, and uh, you test basically all your comp components uh, in, um, uh, in, yes, together. And basically you have packages to deploy, principles that you deploy in packages. So it doesn't matter, package, it is, uh, it doesn't matter. Uh, so you deploy, you deploy your front end in one package, you deploy it, so it can be Docker image, it can be, I don't know, it can be a, uh, automatic deployments through scripts or copy the files to a, to a correct locations, and then you have uh, you have your DB scripts which needs to be deployed also, and if you, and your application basically it, for 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 your application from functionality standpoint of view it doesn't matter when you keep your source codes it's organizational problem, yeah, yeah, yeah. but then you roll back everything together. So if you feel like you have got problem, then you need to roll back to a previous state of your application. It's not just database, it's not, it's not just, uh, just front end, it's, it's not just single repository versus multiple repositories. It's a, it's a recovery point of your application and you just, well, you missed all the checks on all the stagings and uh, you roll back your database, you roll back your, uh, your uh, application to the previous point. Yeah, you have packages. I you have packages. Uh, in different order. At yeah, first, yeah, to, yeah, and you have, you have packages. You oh, deploy yeah. automatically. I have one more uh, solution for this. Uh, for example, in this way, uh, when we have only one master branch, uh, and despite on the number of repositories, we have only one master branch, it means that uh, uh, when we develop some feature, when we close some task, it goes to master branch, and at the same time, we have uh, some work in progress in master branch, uh, not completely, uh, like, work in progress when something is working, but not uh, tested fully or not uh, fully implemented. Uh, we even deploy it to production, but we have feature toggles. So, uh, Feature toggle means that uh, uh, when some user uh, access the application uh, uh, and when user in front end and on back end at the same time uh, separately, uh, we check that whether this user has this feature toggle on or off. And if user has feature toggle on uh, during the development phase of this feature, it means that you can access this feature from the UI, it's uh, available uh, for you on the backend, but other uh, people don't see it. It means, uh, it still it means that you have to test a lot, but uh, if you uh, think in features, uh, you should try to uh, localize this feature uh, and uh, do not affect uh, another functionality. I understand. I understand. Yeah. My original question was, if we have several repositories, several, several releases, several builds uh, for different parts, uh, is there any tools to uh, automate these rollback changes, for example? Or usually it's operations do it manually? I have no idea. Liquid base. In your case, it is liquid base. Uh, in general, base. liquid base. Is it, this is a name of tool, right? This is a tool name which automates migration of DBs. That's only for the DB part. Yeah, yeah. but only the DB part. Guys, but uh, yeah. Uh, so again, it doesn't matter if you have one repository or many repositories. It is a matter that on production you deploy automatically, and if you deploy automatically in production in any form, whether it is a Docker container or it is a custom package, so it is a package, and every package has a version. 
that's that's correct. And with uh, with your deployment strategy, you need to be uh, reliant that you have a rollback scenario. Yeah. Rollback scenario, then you you just roll back from this package to a previous version. So something went wrong. Your your health checks at the end of the deployment. You deploy everything. Then you still you you have usage low usage window when you need a AB deployment. So you just switched off half of your cluster, and because of uh, the uh, low usage windows, users still be still able to use your application. But half of your cluster is on your release, and then you make the final tests against the the deployment, and something goes wrong, and you need to roll back. And you have packages for UI, you have packages for DB, and you have pa packages for your domain service. I don't know. Everything goes in one uh, deployment window, and then you decide, okay, we are not healthy. We are roll, uh, rolling back, and every package has a rollback strategy. And so, yeah. and it, it is rollbacks to I, the previous version, and, and, and it doesn't matter if you have one repository or no, two no, repositories. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and that's it. In general, you will not have, you should not have more than three packages to roll back, because uh, in microservices, I have ten packages. In microservice, if you have, uh, if I need to I, deploy microservices in groups, I understand. Yeah. But if you deploy microservices in groups, it means that you do something a little bit wrong. If no. they are very dependent on each other. No. The no. microservices should be more independent. They in, should be in ideal, couple. in ideal world. Yes. But sometimes, sometimes things go wrong, and you just need to uh, find a workaround, and then, uh, well. I was in a project when it wasn't called a microservices. It is a service oriented architecture. They, 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 you do need to have services because you cannot uh, buy big iron and deploy everything on the big iron. You need to split stuff. When you okay. split stuff, you have dependencies. And you, you, and, uh, you need to be sure that even accidentally, even with human, uh, human error, uh, everything works together. That's why you have your schedule. So you you just tell okay we have a kind of one month deployment schedule two months deployment schedule and that you have you use feature planning and you deploy your services on your staging environment uh, preparing for this final day end of month deployment to the production okay. and this is kind of okay now everything guys everything you would like to be on production please deploy and stage in this by this day please be ready by this day by testing your stuff yeah. and then all your packages comes from one environment to another environment to another environment stuff like that usually three three of them yeah. and uh, it, it allows you to deploy a kind of dependent stuff it might be uh, not dependent microservices living on this environment, but this is a kind of organizational independent schedule, giving you time to kind of check everything uh, on the staging environment. Yeah, yeah. Because, for example, for consumer market, you can tolerate that I come to your site and uh, I get an error at the end when I would I would like to provide my credit card to pay for the for for for, for an item. I can tolerate this. Okay, I'll, I lose one customer. I lose a uh, little bit of revenue. But with financial services, when I when I uh, when, when I you know discover bug in production, it, it costs me a lot of dollars. So I need additional sure. testing, and that's why I need a schedule and uh, testing services together. Yeah. So back to the question. So but it's not related to this methodology. So yeah, you answered yeah. all my questions. Okay. And uh, by the way, uh, uh, these guys have uh, 12 factors. And when we were discussing this uh, methodology with our colleagues, uh, we came up with uh, 13th factor for maybe distributed systems. Because uh, 12 factor apps is not about distributed systems, it's about just a single application, a single service, or not. They do not cover this part, but we think that this is a very important uh, principle factor monitoring that you should have monitoring for your uh, services that you should know uh, that uh, everything is uh, up and working or you have some uh, 
strange behavior, uh, some uh, some perf performance counters or just some counters. On you can observe them on dashboard. You can have notification uh, by email on HipChat or wherever. But uh, you you can have uh, automatic Jira uh, ticket created to check whether it's uh, some service is down or uh, uh, there is some extreme load on, on some service on or some throughput is uh, below the uh, uh, acceptable threshold. So uh, monitoring is very important. Also. Yeah, we can have separate talk about monitoring <laughs> maybe next time. All, all the principles yeah, are quite all. big and uh, yeah. Can, we can have uh, big discussions and come up with. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for staying with us to the end. Yeah. <laughs> and I hope to see you again on our next meetup in uh, May. It's May, May. You yeah. can join us. Thank you for speaking. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time and for this good presentation.